Hello everybody and welcome back to Wardy's Weekly Waffle. You can see I'm up in the top of the grain store. We've got oilseed rape here and at the very end there, another section that were probably 2,800 tonnes of rape in here altogether. We need one more load to fill it. Here we have our winter wheat and hopefully today, by tonight, we shall, uh, we shall have all the winter wheat finished harvesting. We have got a combine, another combine coming today, a case axial flow. So you'll see that in this update. Uh, and also we are putting the um, wildflowers into the, uh, into the field that you saw Tom in with the RX and the culture press uh, in the video a few days ago. But at the minute, for now, I need to get this grain stirrer working. That red beam that goes across there, it needs to come right forward. We need to put the screws in, in front and wind it back. Uh, in case we could the, uh, the shed's full because you can just see down here there's a little bit of room left to the doorway um, but uh, we don't know at the minute how full we're going to get and if we get right to the door and we end up putting the concrete panel across the door we can't put those stirrers in but the problem we've got is that there's no power to the stirrer at the minute for some reason we can't move it so I'm just going to go and have a look at that so I'm down on the walkway now you can see the rape piled up and the wheat there I could come a little bit higher but it's it's um, it's quite deceiving because when that beam starts to move and uh, the screws we put in the big little augers that go right down big little the long augers that go right down to the floor yeah I've got a bit of a dip here could have had a few tons in there maybe a trailer load but anyway um, too late now when they when the screws augers go on there it actually mounds up the wheat around it. And if you're not careful, that beam acts like a, um, a level. <laughs> and as it drags forward, it stops moving because it's dragging the wheat with it. So it lifts this wheat heap up. And uh, so it's not too bad uh, for height, I'm all right. But if you remember, I said a few days ago, I just caught that end with the grain pusher. And you can see there, that's not looking quite right. Not a big job, we just need to wind that forward and wind the whole beam forward and we can just move that go up with the cage and just put that onto the runners it's not a big job to do that hopefully anyway when i get there but we just need to look at this thing and then uh, yeah the stirrer all the electric wires run on you can't quite see it there's a oh you can there's a wire there look it goes right through all these just pull um and then it runs on the rollers in there there's a roller and that grips on top of the runner here and drives all the way to the shed and we put a stopper there's a stop just there, you see we put a stopper where we don't want it to go any further. And then you can put various settings, auto, so the minute it hits that stop, it just comes back and comes back this way, back to this end. Anyway, let's have a look and just see what the problem is, but I doubt I'll be able to sort it. Well, that's a surprise. You can see the lights, I've actually got it to go. It wasn't uh, too big a job. All it was, was that wire, there's a safety wire that runs across it. So if it's running and you happen to catch that, it's a safety wire to stop people going into the augers. If you happen to catch that and push that, it trips this here, which switches it off. And it was that was off there. So that's all, that's all it was. Um, so uh, let me just turn the camera around and I'll just show you the screws going round before uh, we put the, uh, before put the augers in. So there we go. You can see that running at the minute, because that's not quite right there, it's all the way across the left, which it wants to be. So it'll stay there until we can until the beam comes right forward to the front of the shed and it might take five hours or more to get there if you look very close at this roller in here you can just see it moving really slowly you can just hear some fans running in the background as well we'll just nip up and have a look over the top here you can see that's the oilseed rape on the part of the floor where there isn't a drive over ventilated floor. We have the pedestals. You can see there we've got motors on the top now. That's sucking all the warm air out of this drop. So the motors at the back and there. The motors at the back and the front are smaller motors than those ones. I can't quite see those down on the front because they're lower down. But it'll take a while, probably till. Christmas to get this temperature right down to below 10 degrees because it needs a lot of cool nights to do it So that'll be a while before that stirrer beam comes to the front It might even be uh, after we start combining which might be a problem. But anyway, we'll see So I need to get this tractor the fast track uh, Get sorted with this fertilizer spreader 
put it on the flower seed, which is great for this, uh, and grass seed, anything like that. It's really good pneumatic spreader for doing that. And the seed is here in the workshop. And there's no seed label. It might be inside the bag. So I just want to show you what uh, actual varieties we're putting on. So I've just opened that bag fairly easily on cutting the string. Sometimes these strings take an awful lot of doing because these stitching machines don't, um, don't do it as how you think they would do it. Normally though, I was always taught when I was younger, wherever the label is, you want to start the opposite end to the label, cut it off tight next to the bag and then pull and it should come open all the way. If you start the wrong end, it won't. So we'll have a go and see. Absolutely unreal. Just had a phone call while I was just looking at this seed from Laura Driver, who is at the gate, he says, um, with a load, that load of oilseed rape. Is he there? Yes, you can just see over my uh, shoulder here. There he is, sat at the gate waiting. No phone call to say he was coming, because if he'd rung yesterday to give us notice, we'd have said, sorry, we can't deal with it, and um, we'll, uh, we'll have to put you off another day. But anyway, they've just turned up without phoning. This is, we're finding this a lot now with Hauliers. It's, uh, it's not on really, and we just can't deal with it at the minute. We're, with all what we're going on, we'll have to, I told him we'll have to wait two hours before we can get to him. Anyway, back to this seed. I've cut the end off, the opposite end to the label, which is there. And if you pull that end, there we go, it is coming off. And that's, and I'm doing that, I'm not cutting it, because these bags are really strong. So they'll be good for black grass pulling next, uh, next summer. Oh, inside there's another bag. Aha address label and then there should be there we go this is what's in this is the varieties we're putting in so i'll get that out properly so you can see it but a whole load of grasses and flowers i've just moved the stirrer um, stop right near the end of the uh, heap so that when it stops you can see it's going to be hopefully over the floor dryer and not over the wheat so we can get the stirrers in. I've got that other, um, what do you call it, the bracket at the far end with the two stirrers on. I got that straightened out. Wasn't a big job, just went up top and moved it. And these are the little sensors. So when that sensor there, when that touches that piece of metal at that end, that's when it stops the beam. And depends on these settings, whether it's left right or auto is whether it stays there or goes up and down the whole shed but we want it to stay at that end the idea of these stirrers is it conditions the crop mixes it up so it moves the grain from the right on the bottom of the floor to the top and it helps ventilation it helps drying when we dry it and it helps to cool it as well uh, we can't put the stirrers on when they're at the back of the shed because when you tip the grain and push up with a forklift you're actually putting pressure on the on the augers that go right down to the floor. So you have to take them off uh, to fill the shed like we've done and then and then wind it to the front of this. Or you can do it once we've got a little bit of grain in. We should have done it the other day, really, when there's only a small amount of grain in. And then uh, we put it back to the shed so it's out of the way, but we didn't do. And we finally got him tipped. He had to wait two hours, 20 minutes just about to, to do it till we were here, able to do it. So the stirrer beam has nearly got to the edge. You can just see it's nearly at the stop, not quite. You can see the screws going round there, or rather the brackets going round the screws go on. So we'll pop them in and then send it back into the heap. Ruben here is just pushing up that load. And I think we are about full. with 2,860 tonnes in altogether in the two sheds. So that will, that will do us. Might hold a few little tonnes over the edge, but not a lot. Ruben's just clearing up and we'll finally tidy up and shut the doors and that will finish that shed off, keep it watertight. I've just come up to the top of the heap again on the walkway just to move this, uh, this section here, it needs to go further across because there's a pile of wheat right down there and we can't get those augers in. It needs to be in the gap where there isn't any wheat. So I'm just gonna start to move that across. You can just see that chain 
moving. And this should be starting to go the other direction. Which if you look under there, very slowly it is. So we're just calibrating it for the mix. That's the seed coming out there. So we're just going to weigh it. We've borrowed a set of luggage scales. So that's what we need to put in the screen. Minus 0.62 for the weight of the bucket. I've just decided I'm going to turn these spreader plates around because it's going to be down for a few years and yes I'm on GPS but if it's not quite right and there's a gap down the end of the boom I don't want the, uh, there to be a gap of seed so if I turn these the other way up put it there then it will spread the seed up and it will spread it more and it will spread a bit wider particularly at the ends like that so I'll just turn them all the other way up and it will just give a better even spread it is quite still day so we should be alright and the top of this hill, or halfway up it, you can just see over the trees to the Trent Valley in the distance. And I'm just trying to find some landmarks that you can see. Some power stations just through there. And I think that's, is that Marnham power station, I think. And then through in the distance now is the Derbyshire Pennines, right in the very distance. I'm not sure how many miles away, a long way. You can see through there a couple of wind turbines through there yeah good view from up here and you can just see from here now I can see it because I know where to look just the end where that tree line dips down can you just see Lincoln Cathedral in the distance stunning building I think that was built in 10 something I can't just remember the, the dates but it took a hundred and 130 years to build and at one time it was the tallest building in the world and it still holds a record for the tallest building in the world for the longest period for the most number of years and that's about 15 16 miles away so that's got the stewardship areas seeded and just got back to the yard and tom and reuben have got these corkscrews all these augers working i'll just flick the camera around quick before it disappears too much into the heat and you can see what it's doing so we'll look at this one it's going fairly near the floor you can just see there that's the bottom of it so I'll put it back in the crop and you can see up there how it's fastened on that bracket at the bottom there just clamp around it and then you've got a pulley and a belt onto that motor onto the beam and then the same there the two are linked together that beam at the minute is going left to right ever so slowly and that rod there underneath where that bolt is under that wire that bit of box section there connects it to those those pair you can see the box section connecting there and then you've got the same there two augers on there and so the whole thing is moving left to right and right to left at the same time as moving on that tracking on the top. You see now there's that stop. It's pulled away from there because they've set it to go to the back of the shed. So it's now disappearing in the heat. We won't see the bottom of this auger now until we empty the shed because when it's coming uh, to the, when we get it going into the heat, we move that stop to the very top of the heap just there because once you start to bring the auger this way into the heap you'll be amazed at how much it walks the heap of wheat down and it just keeps moving it and moving it so we always stop it just at the apex of the heap at the very top there and then it doesn't bring any of that down and because this is all shallow here this the air gets through here quite quite easily so that's it working this was put in when the shed was built in 2011, I think it was, and this auger, this stirrer beam was 16,000 pounds, and that included all the, uh, the tracking and everything. Now, how much they are today, they'll be double that today, I should say, 
and there's two or three different makes. This is a, what they call a record. You can see that. But it works well. It stirs the heap up, freshens it up, and gets the airflow going, going through it, through this floor, which obviously the fans are up there. And they're pulling air in from the outside. So all this lovely, warm, windy air is pulled in that through those grills up there into the fans. And then the fans will just go in here, pull it down into this tunnel. Oh, I can't get because of that. Into this tunnel. We'll just go in here. Into here. Put the light on. So the air, you can't quite see because it's not light enough, but the air comes from up there, fills this whole tunnel with air. And on the right, I've got these doors open at the minute under the oil seed rake to cool it because the fans were on last night. So the air goes under the floor there and cools it. And you see, this is the side where the wheat, we're just looking, we can lift those up and it will cool. Do It will cool or dry that as well, depends on what temperature and what settings we have the fans on. Works well. Um, we haven't got a continuous flow dryer like some people have, but we've got this drive over floor, which means we can get rid of a load really quickly. And you've seen us push it up with the forklift there. So this is how we keep the grain in here. And this shed holds about 1400 tons this side does when it's stored there five meters deep. And for those of you just asking why is he not taking a full cut, it's because we've just been straightening off a funny shaped side to the field. But this is the 9250 axial flow with the McDon flexi header on. So that's it for another interim midweek Wardy's waffle. And you can see I've got a, another colour combine here. It's a case actual flow of the McDon uh, 10 and a half metre header. There'll be a full report of this on Sunday's waffle that will be at usual time at 8 a.m. So thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you on Sunday with a full look at this case actual flow combine and a few other snippets.